You're right, but you've got to find the time and then apply that there. You're right. You're not saying the time. Because the distance you travel here, is that the actual distance you travel? No, so no. which is what you asked me the other day. So I can't use that distance, so I'm wrong there. So the back in. Well, yeah, you get the time and then sub it back in. So all I can use is time, is question mark. Can you not say the time is t a half? But we want it in terms of a's and u's. You get the value for that value and then you, 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 you divide it by the p, 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 a. Yep. So time is a distance oh, yeah. over a velocity. Do I know a distance and a velocity? Yeah. What distance do I know? Uh, you know the, you know the, for you know the relative, um, what the distance is. Well, you can work out, we've got two a, a, you can work out b to the sharp distance. Okay. Zero. You know the way if you, call, if you call that point x there. P, Q, R. Or, yeah, R. You can get PR. Okay, then, I can work on this distance, PR. How do I work that out? Uh, it's cos. It's 2A. 2A cos T. PR is 2A cos T. And then it's over a velocity of U, because that's the magnitude what? of VPQ. This guy here? Yes, if you get the, the velocity of VPQ, which the is. Magnitude the magnitude of VPQ, it's the square root of what now? Um, three over two to square to be squared. Plus, is it u over two? Yeah. Well, it's it's um yeah. Plus u over two to be squared. Well, the, the root three over two has a u in it as well. All right, root three over two u. It doesn't really matter about the u. It's just going to be whatever u. So this is going to be if I square this. That's going to be the square root of what? Three quarters plus u. Three quarters of u plus u squared over four. U squared over four. There's a u squared. That's me, u squared, yeah. yeah. Is that VPQ? This is the magnitude of VPQ. You can factor out the u squared and the fours. Oh, sorry, yeah. So it's going to be three u squared over four and u squared over four as well? Uh, it's going to be u. Three u squared over four and u squared over four. Four u squared over four. 4u squared over 4 u squared, which is u squared. So it's the square root of u squared, which is u. So the magnitude of vpq, so it's that distance, and my velocity is the magnitude of vpq, which we know is u. Cos 30 is root 3 over 2. And cos 30 is root 3 over 2. So 2a root 3 over 2u. So it's a root 3 over u. And that is the time it took for the second round. So go back to the first stage. That could be done quite easily. Right, we, we, we go, we'll finish this off and then we'll go back to the first stage. So the time for the second stage to get to the shortest distance is this guy here. Now what I want to do is find out how far did each travel in the second stage. So the distance. So is that t a half now? Yeah, all this is after time t a half. Yeah, I know, but if that after half the time it gets to there, so surely it's getting rid of the zero for another half of the time. No. Or another half the time that that's HD would have gotten to the collision. Would have gotten to the collision, yeah. Right. Or we're backtracking and we're not getting there. Right. Okay. So we're looking for a distance for stage two, so distance is equal to time by velocity. Where did the two come from? Sorry. Which two? It's root three over two you root three over you, cos theta is oh, root yeah. two. So now we're back to the real life scenario. In the second half of the motion, we're looking for the distance that P moved. So we look at P to begin with. P was moving for a time of A root 3 over U. And how quickly was P moving in the second stage? Was he moving at U? He was moving at speed U. U's cancelled. So the distance that this guy traveled in the second stage is root 3a. Let's look at q. How far did he travel? Well, he traveled for the same time, which is a root 3 over u. And what velocity did he have in the second stage? u. Did it both at speed u? Well, he didn't change, so he said. Okay, so they both at speed u. So he traveled a distance of root 3a in the second stage. So they both travel the same. They both travel the same distance. Because think about it, they both had the same velocity u, didn't they? Mm. And they both traveling for the same time. So it would make sense that that was the distance that both traveled in the second stage. And one last thing to do, we've now got to go back to how far did they both travel in the very beginning to get to the halfway stage. Remember, one was here, P, one was here, Q, 
and he traveled halfway from there to there. That was 30 degrees, almost done. So God has whoever's looking at this in a video. God will never make the YouTube top 10, I would imagine. Uh, so one is traveling in that direction. One is traveling this direction. That angle was 30 degrees, wasn't it? This was at velocity u. This was at velocity 2u. So you wanted to figure out how long did it take p to get from there to there. So back to first stage. And do we know how long they were traveling for that first stage? No. You can't work it out, you just have to work it. You can work. We have to work on our time. Time is question mark. Do we know our... Do we which? At time, in the beginning, the 4am root 3u, is that just half of that? Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah. T and Q is a half of the total time. So it's equal to 2a over u root 3 I could say from there, it's, yeah, it would be twice the time here. 2a. Do we, sir, do we not say that we couldn't use that though because it was the time after it changed its position to where it. The time from which it started, the very first part of the question was the time from the very beginning to the collision. Yeah. Right? Remember, we worked out what that time was. And now to get from there to the halfway point would be half of the total time. So half of the total time was this guy here. The total time was 4a over u over u. So half of the total time was that. You couldn't use it for the second stage. Because yeah. you couldn't say the second stage at the same time as the first stage. So that's my time. So now I'm going to look at p was traveling at a distance is going to be a time by a velocity. The time for p was 2a over u root 3. And what velocity was P traveling at at the beginning? To U. So it's 4A over root 3. This P afterwards. Q distance is a time by velocity. Time was the same, 2A over U root 3. Multiplied by his velocity, what was his velocity at the beginning? U. So it's 2a over root 3. And if you think about it, q's velocity was twice p's velocity. So if they've both been traveling for the same time, p, q should have, p, sorry, p should have traveled twice what q traveled. If this guy's velocity was a half of this guy's velocity, who would be your velocity? P had the bigger velocity, therefore he should travel the bigger distance. Yeah, that's right. So to finish it off, and I'm going to run out of room here, you just add them. That's a total distance that P traveled in the second stage, the distance that P traveled in the first stage. Q in the second stage, Q in the first stage. So you add the two of them to find the total distance that both can travel. And hopefully that was at least a 50 mark question, so it's the other end of the party. <coughs> So the algebra, I'll just let you finish off yourself. So you can, I'm sure when you add a two of them, you can simplify and you can get them in terms of common factors. But that's all basically. There is a lot in it, but if you can follow that, it brings in. That was one of the tougher questions that I've come up with in the last 15 years. Any final questions? Thank you, gentlemen.